welcome to Mostly Minnesota Music Podcast Edition. I'm Ann Tracy. I'm here with my co-host. Heather Baker. Yes, and we are here with the Kung Fu Hippies. We are here with a small portion of the Kung Fu Hippies, but we're so excited to have you. We've got Brad Ray and we've got Frank Leonovich. Thank you for joining us. Our pleasure. Yeah. I, here, I'm here. Yeah, I'm, I'm delighted because you. We, I enjoyed... <laughs> Your recent video, you just put out a video on February 5th. That's correct. No, Northwoods, Northwoods Boy, and that is this, a sneak preview to an upcoming album. I, I understand. Yes, it is. Really excited. We're working on the album right now. And it, it feels like a... It feels like a little bit of a different sound for you guys. You guys sound a little more country than jam from what I've heard of your music before. I think that's probably a fair statement. Um, but, but uh, you know, I think that when it comes to writing songs, and of course Brad wrote this song, you know, you, you write what you know. And, and then you find the best accompaniment for that. And I don't think that getting hung up on styles or intentions, you know, helps that process at all. I think that you just go with what feels right. And so, yeah, it's an interesting uh, new thing for us, I guess, in nice. that way. Because you guys have been playing together for a long time. Uh, I yes. joined uh, 2000, uh, 21 years ago. But wow. <laughs> have a long history. Frank started, uh, in, I believe, nine, so I was kind of duke. Yeah, we've uh, we've been up and around the five area for uh, a couple of administrations and and a long, a long time together. So uh, we're quite comfortable with each other. Yeah. Well, the band is legal to drink now, so that's got to be a... <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, tell us what... Just give us a little bit of the of the, the history of playing together, because you, you, it's amazing when you see a band that's been playing for so long, even if there's some st starts and stops, we all have that, but that's impressive. Thanks. Yeah, I mean... Uh... Yeah, we granted we did take a, a fairly long hiatus in the middle of this. So, uh, but you know, we even when we weren't playing together as the Kung Fu Hippies, uh, most of us were playing music together in other various projects and, and combinations. You know, anyway, just because that's that's who we are. We just we you know we're all old friends, and and some of these guys you know grew up went went to high school together. You know, and they've got real deep roots with them and. Yeah. And uh, and so it just just always seems natural to fall back to this because we we just get together we 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 still get excited about it and we, you know we have so much fun playing that uh, that for us it kind of it takes on its own sort of inertia that you just keep doing it because nothing else seems to be worth you know giving that time to or or something I don't know <laughs> uh, I would say um you know I. Of all six of our our donors, uh, ever since our our young team, um, going to see five and music together, creating uh, with yeah, at the core of it. and um and, and uh, Brad, I'm I'm gonna let you know that. We're getting about every third or fourth, or at least I'm getting about every third or fourth word. Yeah, I was just going to ask if, that, if you were hearing that as well. Um, I'll speak a little slower, more clearly. Uh, that, live, live music uh, is always really been a part of all of our psyche. So uh, um, when when we would start playing together, it just really clicked and uh, entertaining people. And making people happy and dance is, is, like I said, at the core of, of our being, I would say. And how has it been in the last 
year. Have you guys been able to play any live shows at all? We haven't. No. No, it's it's been uh, it's been a it's been a tough year. I, you know, I think for everybody. Uh, for us, it's yeah, it's, it's hard not to be able to play together. At least at least we're getting some stuff done in the studio, which is, you know, it's something and, it, and we're grateful for it for sure but yeah we really miss playing live you know that's what this band like brad was just saying that's what that's what we're 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 always been we've always been geared towards a live experience uh more so than uh anything else that's always been kind of our our central focus is playing live well and you guys really play places where the audiences tend to be super interactive and you're you're an interactive band yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, that sounds fair. Uh, everybody kind of has their little pocket, you know, and, uh, and there's a lot of uh, one of those. We always say about this band that, that we're greater than the sum of our parts. There's something <laughs> about the chemistry that we have, is, you know, and the friendships we have with these guys, you know, uh, makes us better than we are as individuals. You know, something just there's something there's some kind of chemistry there with us that we just love. That's nice. Yeah. That's nice. Now you're working on the album now. As I said, we've That's seen, correct. We've seen, we've heard the the first song. Are you are you playing entirely new songs? Are you playing songs that are that the audience will know? Um. Well. Yeah, the, uh, there's gonna be a, at least a couple that I can think of that are going to be on the record that we've been playing out for a while. Although, bringing them into the studio with this producer we're working with. Um, the songs tend to change shape a lot when you get into the studio and start really, you know, analyzing it and, and coming up with, you know, all the variables. There's so many possibilities. And, and when you work with a good producer, he'll bring his vision to it. And, and, and you kind of, you know, uh, bash the ideas around until something that seems functional and, and has a natural feeling, I think is what we look for, uh, it just you can tell when you know you don't want it to be overproduced you don't want it to be really really rustic there's, there's got to be a certain medium to to telling the story you know without overtelling it uh but yeah i think for the most part these are going to be new songs that have only been played maybe once or twice or not at all uh with a couple of exceptions nice. hey northwood's boy you know brad I, i'm pretty sure we didn't start playing this until right before we started recording and I think we might have played this one once or twice. So that's yeah, pretty new stuff. So that's um, great. Is, is there a theme, <clears throat> excuse me, a theme, or is it just a collection of different genres? Because like we were saying, this the Northwoods boy sounded a little bit country, then is a few more rock and jammy or what can you tell us i would say that the, that we're currently putting polishes on uh, is a real rocker that's sure. it's a uh, explosion of sounds uh, really real sonic uh uh euphoric kind of uh uh explosion of uh of, of sounds and rhythms and harmonies so uh and uh and i know that the other songs that we have in the in the gauntlet we're really excited to watch them take shape as well so with the producer you are kind of sitting back and gonna have it's sort of a gift to you of a surprise gift of how it's gonna come out too a little bit um, well, not necessarily. I, the, what's in, pardon me. What's what's important in getting a, a good producer is 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 because sometimes uh, it's it's good to get an outside take on what you're doing, uh, and and people that have done a lot of work producing a lot of, of material for a lot of different bands. They, they tend to get a signature kind of a, a, a vibe, a sound, a feel that you get working with them. There's a stylistic aspect to it. And uh, John Herkert, who, who's uh, producing this, is uh, uh, just a terrific musician in his own right and somebody that we've known for 
decades and uh, have a ton of respect for his vision. He's a really musical person, just really uh, knows how to find those fun little hooks and, and little turns of phrase, very clever sort of stuff, you know, to, to help, uh, you know, kind of sculpt the song out the, the way it, it can be at, at his very best. It is, I think that's kind of the reason you get a, a guy like Johnny involved. So you're not just talking to yourself and seeing things one way. Uh, I don't know. It's hard. It's, I think Brad described it better, but yeah, you know, it, 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 it's, it's going to run the gamut stylistically. We've got some of the songs that are going to be in odd times like signatures and, and kind of dark minor key sort of funks. Uh, we got some straight up rock and roll songs on here, but you know, we try to keep everything kind of rooted in, what we, what I consider to be traditional music forms, you know, uh, rootsy stuff. If it's going to play a blues song, song play, play, play it, you know, the way it should be. Northwoods Boy was written as a bluegrass tune, and and uh, this is kind of the the how it came out through that whole interaction with John in the studio and us coming together with the song, taking a a, two, a fast two beat uh, bluegrass song and creating something that was completely different uh, by the time it was done. We were just all, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a fun feeling when, when, it, when it all comes together in the end and you hear something and you think, wow, we did that. That's, that's pretty good. <laughs> you know, <laughs> let's do that again. <laughs> I, I like someone's description of the song being the uh, Spaghetti Northern. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The theme to a Spaghetti Northern. Yeah, theme to a Spaghetti Northern. <laughs> Yeah, that's that was the that was the vibe that uh, we we kind of went for with this with the baritone guitars and the kind of the 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 really stripped down sound, but you know the, the harmonies are very very country folk harmonies, you know full, you know what do you call them uh, gospel harmonies. Well, and and maybe it's because there's such a Minnesota feel to the video, but it it feels like a Minnesota song. Which, if you're having John involved, in, John has been involved with dozens, if not more, bands. I, I mean, I, there, there's a great appeal for me to a song that sounds like it's a Minnesota song. Unlike, uh, unlike, uh, I am a transplant from the, uh, uh, the northwest part of rural setting, uh, farm boy. Baby. Hey, Brad, you're breaking up again. A very outdoorsy family. I, I grew up in the northern hinterlands of the state, uh, and I found uh, a lot of my rights and uh, delivery. So, uh, I uh, yeah, yeah, I'm a I'm a true boy. I guess. You can. Nice. <laughs> no, I said it really did. Ha I. I, I mostly from the Twin Cities, but I've spent a lot of time up north too, and it did have that nice up north, that up north feel. Okay. I was going. Good. Well, that makes me more excited, you know, even more excited to see the, hear the rest of the, the album and to hear that yeah. it's even more, you know, I'm, I love all many, many genre, most genres, you know, but it's, yeah. you know, to, the rock and I can go for too. <laughs> yeah oh man uh, but you know and it's the, what I really love about the video in this in the song is that Brad carries it with, with such authority uh, being you know the Barrett Farm boy that he is you yeah. know and, and, and he's he's the guy that when we're when we're uh, uh, traveling you know when we drive through some town he'll be the guy that says okay fellas well this year we're in the town of Finlandson now and back in the <laughs> and he'll tell you something historical about that area and some story he knows some anecdote about you know minnesota he's a, he's like a walking encyclopedia of this stuff you know and uh it, yeah yeah because he, he definitely captures it he's he's the real article you know <laughs> it's a blessing and a curse i'll tell you trust me <laughs> was a librarian for years. I can go for facts. I could I could tour with you guys. I'd listen all day long. <laughs> <laughs> well, we happen to really like librarians. 
Good. You're welcome to come with anytime. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you let your hair down after you pull it out of the bun. We like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Brad. I can do both. I can do both. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you guys, you guys must have miss touring and that your experience of touring together i mean not only just being together for so long but you guys have spent a ton of time on the road yes we know each other better than we would like i'm sure on some levels <laughs> but, but 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 no i mean you know and all just aside you know we, we get along so well we whenever we do get to go and travel which isn't as much as we get older and you know having children of our own and responsibilities yeah. Uh, every time we get to go do it, though, we just we're just so tickled, you know, to be able to get out and just hang out and do what we do, uh, not just playing the shows, but just you know being. We just like hanging out together. We have our own language, and we you know we have our our own sort of uh, 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 zeitgeist, I guess, or something within the band. You know, of our shared experiences, we can always yeah entertain ourselves for hours. <laughs> Well, and I think that feel comes off in the music too, where you feel like you're in a a warm environment. You know, you feel like this will be this, this is going to be a good night. Yeah, yeah, we live for those music. nights. Uh, we that that's very much an intentional thing about us and our, our approach to playing music and how we kind of uh, cultivate our our friends and family and, and people that come to see us play. We definitely are interested in creating, I think, a sense of community and and uh, and, and and close closeness to each other. We you know we know everybody pretty much on a first name basis, you know. And when we get together with all our people, it's just we we you know we can sit and have a conversation about how's life, how are the kids, what's going on with you, you know. And these you know it's 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 a gift for sure, absolutely something we're very grateful for. It's funny, as you were saying that, I was thinking what a, what a gift to give to them, the, the folks who have not been able to see you live, to be producing this album. At this point in time, it's really comforted knowing that the hippies are still turning out good uh, times. Uh, and it's forward. I catch. Yeah, Brad, you're, you're, we got to get you a better connection, I think. <laughs> Let me see. Oh, well, we'll try that. We'll try. We'll try to get it a better connection, but it must. Yeah. I, it's... The flip side is it must be, um, it must be funny to be recording songs that you haven't, you don't have the comfort level with. You don't, it must give you a freedom when you know the audience doesn't, you know, this isn't the song that they've heard, you know, every Saturday night for the last two years or. Right. Yeah, no, there is a certain freedom in that. Absolutely. Cause you, you know, you really, the, the worst, I think one of the worst biggest disservices you can do yourself in going into the studio recording new music is having any sort of preconceived notion in your own mind about what you think it's supposed to sound like, what you think you're supposed to, because you'll be wrong. And that's, you know, and, 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 and some people are more comfortable with the recording process than others. Uh, I, I fluctuate, you know, if, if I get an idea in my head and I go in and try and force that through, I find that it's frustrating and, and it doesn't come out the way you want it to. And it slows down the whole progress, you know, of, of the, of the composition, but, but uh, I think, the, yeah, having an open mind, the freedom to know that you can try any number of different ideas and, you know, make them tiny little tweaks and, and modifications to them to try and get just the right turn of phrase you know, it's, it's its own kind of work, but when it comes out in the end, I mean, it's, it's, it's such well uh, spent time and, and the journey is, you know, half the, half the fun, definitely trying all those things out, you know. And especially with six of you in the band, you might each have a different idea. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> true. That's true. Um, but in, again, you know, we've been playing together for so many years that we, we almost intuitively know in any given situation 
what uh, the other guy is going to likely do because we've got so many hours of playing together uh, under our belts. You know, it's it's we we don't do a lot of we don't do a lot of jamming like you know being generally considered to be a jam band. We're not really a jammy band, but when we do occasionally do stretch out and kind of uh, unbolt ourselves from whatever composition we're playing and decide to just go for it. Uh, we we kind of have a language we speak to each other. So we kind of know where we're going with things. So it doesn't just turn into a train wreck, you know? <laughs> uh, and usually it works out pretty well, you know, not, not always. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, you, you get to know the, you get to know the kind of the toolkit of the guy next to you and what you can lean on him for, you know, and vice versa. Can I can I go step back to when you were saying you have when people go to your shows there's like a whole family multiple yeah. multiple generations do you know do you have any idea of how I am so fascinated when certain bands can get that cuz I feel like it's unusual where it's more community rather than, you know, just this is your favorite band. Do you know what element might attract or what it is you can pinpoint or no? An element that we use that to attract people? Or just that you've noticed. Oh. I think in, I don't I know. Think, I think an element that's that's runs through the whole the whole uh the whole game, you know, not, not just within the band, but the audience, the get togethers at shows and the people that interact, you know, everybody knows each other. Uh, there's, you just feel like you're kind of a bit player in this and, you know, you're not necessarily the focus of what's going on here. You're just providing a soundtrack to it, I guess, to some degree for this great get together of all these people that really love to see each other and, and, you know, and, and, kind of enjoy their time together you know and part of it is is that we're playing and providing music and 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 and, and but part of it for them is just talking to each other and being there and you know not necessarily focusing on every little thing we're doing uh and and, and the same goes for us you know we we look forward to oh at set break i get to go down and talk with with amy and ted and you know and so and so and and see what's going on with you know we make a plan we, we get together and we do stuff all the time brad uh, has a, a number of campouts he organizes in the summer and the fall, and and we get tons of people together to go camp for the weekend and just sit around the campfire and play music and cook up food and you know let the kids run around and and yeah then other nights we you know we're at a festival and it's more adults but it's the same crew you know it's just that whole tribal thing we all learned I think well going to see the grateful dead of course uh when we were younger uh kind of instilled that whole ethos into our thinking and i think that there's just a a, a natural sort of osmosis that goes on there that people just sort out what you're about and, and see your friends and, and say oh yeah i want to go hang out with them folks they look like they're having a good time you know and then next thing you know you're on a first name basis with everybody and you know you get everybody's phone numbers and they're planning on getting together next week it's it's that easy yeah, you know, there's such a good a good bunch of people. All right, just doing a quick audio check. Is this any better? Yes. Yes. Oh, good. Yeah, my wife uh, <laughs> suggested I do something. Um, yeah, another another thing is is uh, you know our our love for uh, our, our families. When we started this band, we were in our twenties and and not married and nobody had kids and now it's a completely different story and and we're really uh excited to rope our next generations into this live music experience and uh and 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 bring along our fans as one big family like frank said uh taking cues from the grateful dead uh we uh we love to our greatest joy is bringing people together and uh, we have that ability, and that's a that's a strong power to have these days, uh, when there's so many other distractions. Live music is uh, is a common denominator uh, to to bring out the best of people, and 
we uh, strive to do that uh, in spades. Yeah, even on even in the video, even even when you're not in the room, it you, it gets that feel. It gets it, which is awesome. Now, do you how how old are the kids? Are you bringing any of the any of the kids showing their 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 dad's good habits, music ship? Oh, oh yes, that's for sure. Um, I I would say uh, there's music in in all of our kids that we have. Um, Yes, uh, it, and uh, the future, the future looks bright. Let's just say that. <laughs> yeah, Br Brad, uh, Brad's got some bragging rights in that department. His his daughter Lucia, you know, could uh, sing in on pitch when she was about five, nice. which is incredible. And and she's been known to jump up and sing us a song here and every now and again. And everybody just gets so excited to see her when she does it. You wouldn't believe that she's what eight. So she's ten. Yep, she's. Oh, she's ten she's now. Okay. She's drawn to the microphone like a moth to the flame. That's for sure. Yep. <laughs> she, likes to, she likes to be in front of people and and strut her stuff. Yep, that's for sure. She is her daddy's daughter. <laughs> Indeed. That's, I can see where that would add a whole layer of community. <laughs> it's kind definitely. of precious. <laughs> Do you do you write the songs differently now? I mean, with community in mind, I would, I would think you know twenty based at. I'm going to say you guys are now twenty eight. <laughs> you know, there's, there's a difference, but you know, do you do you write more with community in mind, with the family in mind? Uh, I would say so. I would say my um, the next couple songs I'm working on have that element of family. Uh, most most definitely, you write what you know. And uh, right now, uh, you know, my life is uh, book book bags and backpacks, and and, uh, <laughs> and you know that's how it goes. Teaching my daughter to cross country ski right now, so that's a lot of fun. Nice, yeah. nice, nice. Now we've we've talked to a lot of musicians, and it you know obviously we've had a strange year. Has that had an impact on your music at all, too? Will we hear any pandemic? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've, I've toyed around with the idea of trying to, you know, reference or name check the pandemic in some way in a song. And, and I, and, and, it just, uh, it's not, it's not clicking. <laughs> it's just not, I don't know. Uh, I think we're all we're all we're pretty much done with it, you know. I think we want to wipe wipe it clean off. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think. I guess my soundtrack would sound whatever what uh, Netflix sounds like. That would be the soundtrack to my pandemic right there. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Although, although I have I have found myself going down quite a few dark rabbit holes of music in the, during this last year with all this downtime, uh, you know it's it's been kind of fun and uh, stretching out a bit in my listening. Any any rabbit holes you'd recommend? Oh well, uh, one that I'm currently d digging my way to the bottom of right now is uh, uh, there's a, a, a fantastic uh, guitarist. A mandolin player and songwriter named Rye Cooter, who's very famous uh, yeah. in, in certain circles. Uh, he his his he's talking about Americana yeah. and roots music. Uh, there's something quite spectacular about the way he can deliver an honest message in a song. In again, uh, a thing being greater than the sum of its parts, you know, consistently. Uh, it's it's he's very inspiring. Yeah, I, I've been listening to him a lot lately. I'm gonna be in the car with my dad tomorrow, 50 50, whether I hear a little <laughs> nice. good or myself. It's... Yeah, no, will we How hear some you, of Brad? that? No, god, no, I'm delighted, delighted. I've you know, obviously, been doing road trips with my dad my whole life. I that's, that's the music that I was brought up on, so that's uh -huh. awesome. I've been enjoying um, um, some more Leonard Cohen lately. Oh. 
And uh, of course, John Prine is always my go-to. Right. Um, and I've, I've been kind of uh, more into a uh, little Mark Gay lately. I've been putting uh, old players. So I missed the name. I missed the sorry. The last name you said I missed. Uh, Mark. And uh. <laughs> that name is cursed. I missed it again. <laughs> uh, Marvin Gideon, Opie Robinson. Marvin Gay. Marvin Gay. Okay. <laughs> I am familiar. Yes. Okay. But I, I've so, heard of them. Hmm. Yeah. I think I had some. <laughs> so, will we see hints of this in the upcoming music? Well, you know, maybe, maybe so now, now that you're all, we'll see what, what we can do. Yeah. Perfect. I heard enough of that that I believe now you're going to write us some songs that definitely include all of those. Is that pretty much what you guys heard too? <laughs> I think that's awesome. So do you do you have an idea of when uh, do you have an ETA for the album? Are you guys are you taking your time? Are you just letting the music dictate the time? Well, uh, yeah, I mean we're taking our time. Um, because we can. I mean, there's yeah. really no, there's no reason to be in a hurry right now to do anything. Because we get all, nothing but time. <laughs> right, we're all in lockdown. Um, in, in in the pandemic has definitely made this into a longer process. Because there's periods of time where it's just not safe to go get together in the studio. Uh, so you know, the, with the vaccines coming out and everything. Uh, some of us, Brad's had his vaccine, so uh, nice. Nice. yeah, but, but you know, when, once everybody else gets vaccinated, that'll help us be able to get together and, you know, and not have so many worries about getting family members sick, that sort of thing. Um, we've done pretty well so far, but yeah, uh, there's no, there's no real ETA. Uh, I think we'd like to be done recording sometime this summer, I think in a general sense, but if it takes longer than that, that's okay. That doesn't work. That makes no difference to us. You know, we're more concerned with getting it right than we are, you know, creating deadlines for ourselves. Might end up with a double album. <laughs> well, that's what our last one was. And, uh, and yeah, I think that could happen, but I, I don't think so. I think that the, the idea, the, actually, the idea this time is we're, we're, we we want to do uh, a digital release for, for the album when it's done, but we're not going to make CDs. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to print vinyl. Oh. So for the, for the album, we're going to do LPs, and uh, you can only have, uh, what is it, 70-some minutes? Uh, what is it, Brad? 76 minutes? To... Hey, 70 uh... 72 72 minutes is, is, is how much music you can put on a on a on a full length album so we have to keep it under 72 minutes so uh for us that should be a, a, a task in itself <laughs> uh so it, we're probably looking at about nine songs in total for this well and if you time it right you'll be able to have an actual release with people in front of you and that would really be the dream wouldn't that be nice yeah, yeah. Sure. that would be great rough there right now without being able to stay in front of a live audience and there are still so many people who are very cautious of going out in public so we're going to wait until all the green <laughs> well, I think especially if you have that kind of community feel, you know, I think that's probably the right the right way to go. And, and you've got families and you've got, you know, you, you want to make sure that everybody is feeling safe and everybody is, is able to come if they if they can. That's Absolutely. Yeah. And, and most of our friends that are our age are our parents and our aunts and uncles are, are getting up there in age and they're in higher risk categories for something like COVID that, you know, and, and that's the last thing anybody wants on their conscience right now is losing somebody like that. Yeah. Uh, especially after 
I feel like we're really, you know, near the home stretch now. We've, we've, we've gone so long and done so well that we're almost home and it would just be a real shame, you know, to get that, that far down the road here with this thing and have it, have somebody get sick. Yeah. That, yeah. It'd, it'd be pretty hard to swallow that. Uh, nothing's, nothing is worth that. No, no, we can absolutely see the light at the end. Yeah, I think so. Or here the album at the end of the in, in, in sure. <laughs> yes. oh well we will look forward i'm hoping that you might leak out a couple more songs and maybe even videos between now and then in your spare time <laughs> we we uh there are plans to do that uh since we're not in a hurry and and we're all kind of in in lockdown together uh we certainly have the bandwidth to be able to do another video and do another single release. And we might do a series of them and then issue it all in, on an album in the end of things. You can, if you want to buy it in vinyl, you can, otherwise it'll be on streaming platforms anyway. So uh, the world is different now, you know, you don't really necessarily have to put a framer on something and, and call it something in particular anymore. You can just release tracks or like you said, you know, uh, and, and, and I think people, you know, the accessibility, it's, it's, it, it's all pretty much the same now. It's the, the important part is just making sure that you're making something that people want to hear. If we, do, we don't talk about the B side anymore. It's a whole new yeah. world. <laughs> we, we were actually talking about doing a single, uh, doing a single <laughs> with an A, with an A and B side, doing an actual, you know, uh, 45 RPM singles, but, uh, the logistics of it uh it's surprising actually the is an odd fact that last year i believe vinyl outsold compact discs for the first time oh, since wow. the late 80s and and every record pressing outfit that i've contacted is about five months out on wow. getting anything done so they're busy and people are actually doing albums and doing vinyl again and and there's a there's definitely an appetite for that and i think that's pretty cool yeah. so but yeah it kind of got in the way of our releasing we didn't want to wait five months to release northwood's boy <laughs> no i'm glad you didn't i'm glad yeah. you didn't you said there's a and people i think people have the time now to listen to whole albums too but that that wanting to hear one or two songs will never go away you know in today's yeah. Right. It's work a day world. I mean, but it, right. it's true. You know, it's like, oh, I can listen to that and then. Yep. You got your Spotify playlist, you know. <laughs> yep. Yeah. You know, you know, you've just got that 10 minute break for lunch while you, while you move from your living room to your kitchen, you know. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But as I said, the flip side of it is that then you've got your Tuesday nights where you can listen to a whole album. I mean, it's sure. just, as you said, all, all avenues are fair game now. Yeah, it'll be really fun when we get it done and we can drop the needle down onto a, you know, an actual vinyl album and listen to it the way that some of us, some of us, I think, probably still believe rock and roll should be heard, is, you know, in the correct context. There's something to be said for that, uh, that sound of a record, you know, uh, there's something iconic about it, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. On the, you know. it and those first notes that come out are always such a yeah the liner notes yeah oh yeah i miss those i miss yeah i miss the album covers i miss the notes i miss everything i miss trying to make it skip with my dancing i miss all, all, all the things until <laughs> i got old enough to realize you don't want to do that but i still no <laughs> All those things you learn when you're little. <laughs> I've, I've I've made many of my dad's country albums skip. I know I have, so that's for sure. <laughs> uh, no doubt. I'm glad. I'm real glad that I he, he gave me access to his record album at a young age. So I'll I'll be always forever grateful to my dad Tim for that. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, we just cleared out my parents. There's some really good things and there's some real crap. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> I, won't, I, I won't say which, but yeah, yeah. So. 
Well, awesome. We, Heather, we have something to look forward to now. We have the whole couple, I know. Of, videos, couple of songs. and. For, I was going to say, yeah, I'm a big fan of the um, videos coming out. It just, you know, I'm a kid of the, grew up on MTV, so I love all the videos. So if you can <clears throat> keep that coming, too. We have every intention to. Make it, it, uh, the cards fell just right on a perfect day and a perfect location. And, uh, and we all in such good spirits. And, uh, the producer really harvested his creative energy uh, to make something very special. So we're very happy you got to enjoy it. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, I'll include this in the notes, but for folks who are just listening, how can people find you online? Well, you can find us on pretty much all your social media platforms, so Instagram, Facebook, uh, Bandcamp. Uh, I, hell, I think there's even a, a, a large selection of live recordings on the Internet Archive and, and uh jam base i think still but that's really more for touring and we're not playing out so there's nothing to see there but but yeah you know you can hit us on facebook instagram youtube uh our youtube channel uh all the usual suspects nice <laughs> nice, nice. Well, just a there's quite a bit of youtube content, so just uh youtube kung fu hippies uh three words a kung and then fu and hippies and the h-i-p-p-i-e-s and you'll be able to find them. Right yeah. Yeah, I think I saw something from uh, whatever the version of Stephen Sharon is now. Live, Twin City Live. Was it Christmas? Oh, yeah, Rudolph. That oh, was yeah. fun. You got some fun yeah, stuff out there. Fun. That yeah, that fun. was fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, we look forward to more. And uh, yeah, we look forward to more. So we're, we're just going to keep, we're going to keep tabs on you guys. Outstanding. Well, I really up, appreciate so, it. Yeah, yeah thank appreciate you for having us. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Our pleasure. All right. Have a good All night. Right. Yeah, you too. Thank, thank you. you.